So this will be a quick tutorial about how to bring some images into Gravity Sketch so you can work with them. And I've taken a couple of photos with my phone of the potato that we've asked you guys to draw. And so I have them saved on my computer. And what I wanna do for a first step is to, I'll show you where they are. I've got a folder in no particular order with no great names here, just directly from my phone, a few photos of a potato. What I'm going to do is I want to open a landing pad. And log in. And you can see there's an option. And this is just through the browser with my files. I'm going to create a new folder here. And I'll call it potato. Create that folder. This will be make it easier for us to find it later. Double click that and then I can upload some photos to here. And so I'll find my photos. Which are these. Select all of them and I'll upload them. And so we see these populating within this folder. So this will then allow me to see these photos when I'm in Gravity Sketch. And so I'll let them finish uploading. So it just takes a second to update. And as this is updating, I see if I go back to my files and then come back into the potato folder. Now these are there uh, with a sense that I have a couple of photos there. And again, these were just quick photos. You may want to document something, add some points of reference for these things as you're photographing them. This is part of the exercise. But I am going to now launch Gravity Sketch and show you how to find these and how to work with them within the Gravity Sketch interface. Okay, now that I've got Gravity Sketch up and running, I'll go into Gravity Sketch. Okay, now that I'm in Gravity Sketch, I want to change a couple of options for us given what we're drawing. I'm going to go into settings, and set my workspace. I want just the simplest of spaces, no shadows. Even turn off some of these other things. So now we have a very basic thing. We can access from the left controller with the blue thumb button, reference images. And so now we can find our reference images and we can refresh. It's gonna be a cloud references and now we can see our references, I can see my potato folder, and now I can find these. And in the same way that we grabbed the prefabs earlier, we can grab with the, the drawing hand controller, grab these images and pull them out into the space. We can then work with these, if I hide that controller, you can see they are fixed in space. And let's see, I can, right, or sorry, with my non-drawing hand blue button, I can unlock them. I can scale them in the same way that I scale objects before. And so what I could even do is begin to build some sense of these. I'll un unanchor this. You could even begin to build some sense of this object as we move around these images in three dimensions these are probably not totally aligned correctly but i could flip these around so if i have a view of the bottom i might be able to look at them that way and see the potato from this side 
versus the potato from this side versus looking at them from this direction. And so while we don't necessarily want you to be tracing these things, these reference images might be helpful for you to understand different aspects of them. And so again, we can scale this up quite large and begin to understand this as a landscape, right? Or as a, as a, as a map that we're going to be working with. So maybe I'll even just start with drawing some very simple strokes that are very thin, but starting to highlight different areas within this where I might be able to map different things, different idiosyncrasies of the surface. And then as I begin to pull them together. So now I'm navigating the three dimensions, not scaling and, and it may even be useful to grab your image and lock it again with the blue button. And so now that's locked in space, which we may or may not want. And as I navigate, I actually don't want to lock that object. So let's do this. Let's do this again. I'll grab these, delete them. Now the non-locked approach allows me to really begin to engage in the photographs. And so as I was doing before, I want to again work with, with nice thin lines so that I can build these up over time. But maybe I begin to highlight different areas so that as I come back in, I can begin to work with these. And so let's think about how we begin to draw in three dimensions what this might be. And we can start to build a framework up with this. This kind of scar, this element, this element. Or what we start to get three dimensionally with the potato. And then what we can also do is to um, hide our images. And so in this case, if I'm drawing with a light line, I probably want to set my background to be a dark background. And so if I bring, if I want to bring my reference images back, I can turn them back on. And so you might choose between your background. So it might make sense for me to use a white background because I have a white background in my photographs. And then to be working with a black line as I begin drawing here now. And we might just kind of map out how we're starting. Start identifying key areas that we might come back in and start to build these up. Start working on our other side. Oh, there's a gigantic asteroid of a potato over there. And then again, as I hide, as I work back and forth between hiding the reference images, we can start to get some sense of what this might become. And we can always, what's nice is turn them back on, bring in an, an additional image, begin to reference things this way. We don't like our giant, wow, that gigantic image over there is, Let's see, how do we work with that? It's fixed in space. I don't know what I do about the giant potato over there. Anyway, maybe a good background, maybe a good inspiration or a good reference, but we can also make this potato quite large as we move away from it, 
start to look at it. Navigate around and really start to move into that space. Right? Now it feels like I'm, I'm occupying this as a landscape. Start to move in and begin to talk about these different aspects. Right? I might have them as kind of call outs and I'll come back and look at them later or re-photograph a potato and begin to reference it. All right, hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions and I will add a couple more tutorials now.